Hey, I'm Jeremiah Ronner, and this is Deeply Rooted. Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Deeply Rooted. I'm Jeremiah Reiner and thank you guys so much for joining us and wherever you're at and however you may be listening. We appreciate your support. Uh, if you get a chance sometime, check us out on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our page there at Deeply Rooted and also our Facebook page as well. Be sure to like it and follow that. And if you'd like to reach out to us and send us a message, we'd love to hear from you. Answer any questions you might have or comments or concerns. We'd love to get your feedback on what we're doing here. Uh, but today I've got... Two really good friends of mine here and really excited about uh, this podcast and looking forward to the topic today. But I'm going to look at the subject of worship uh, with friends of mine here, Israel and Whitney Crawford. And they've got a deep background uh, in serving the Lord. I've known these guys for a long time. Uh, Israel and I go way back, actually, uh, for all these years. He's known me literally since birth, so that may or may not be a good thing. But um, glad to have you guys. A house full of kids. Busy with careers and also serving the Lord, and so I know that's a lot to put on your plate sometimes, so we want to kind of talk about that and how you all juggle uh, serving the Lord and at the same time still living uh, in this crazy world that we live in. So uh, just right off the bat, when I, when I throw out the word worship to you guys, uh, what comes to mind when you think about that? Uh, for me, it's the, the one thing that we can can offer God is is our praise and uh, it's it's just an intimate time time that I can spend along with prayer. To me, it all works hand in hand. Just just an intimate time between uh, me and the Lord to to just do my best to give give my part back. So that that's that's the way I see it. What about you, Whitney? When I hear it, automatically all I can think is just it's a response to greatness, like mm-hmm. just the the greatness of who He is and and how worthy he is of praise and it's just um it's it, it is it's just a response yeah to me that's that's uh, that's how i feel about it that's automatically what i think now obviously you guys have a tremendous talent but you know somewhere along the line that started somewhere i mean there there had to be a, a focal point of where you got interested i wonder if you can think back sometimes when you were younger maybe where you got really interested or passionate about music and worship and being able to lead in that capacity. I remember back at the church we grew up in, uh, I heard, I remember hearing it for the first time. We had a old fashioned foot washing service and I heard a, the youth director at the time sing harmony. And it just <laughs> like it, it all of a sudden made sense to me. I was like, what is this noise? So I started mimicking what he did and then I watched, I guess I just, I just opened my eyes to what was going on around me, and I watched people's response to the songs that were being sung and the, the words that were being said, and I just thought that, that in, a sen- in a selfish way, that, that's a, a great ability, a great skill to have is, is to watch, to be able to sing notes and words and watch people respond in that way. Because as you know, where we grew up, there were people shouting and mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of response to songs and things like that and I just thought how cool would it be to be able to do that and I remember it I pretty much remember what I was wearing it's kind of weird but but I started mimicking that the youth director and just I don't know it just got in my blood from there how old were you when you started guitar uh I didn't start playing guitar until I was 15 okay I think yeah I was 15 we I never had access to any instruments. My my mom had an auto harp, mm-hmm. but I had no clue what it what, what it did. Uh, Jason Perry actually from at Midway Baptist Church. I think he's still a firefighter in the Midway area now. Mm-hmm. He brought an electric guitar one time to a youth rehearsal, and he let me hold it and he showed me a G chord, <laughs> and I just played the G over and over throughout the whole song, and I was smiling. You know, I thought I was doing good, and he. Afterwards, he said, you know you have to change, right? <laughs> I said, no, I really didn't know that. So he pretty much sparked my interest in guitar because of the sound the electric guitar made. Yeah. So it was 
it was a, a pretty neat experience. And then he took some time afterwards to show me some chords to go along with it and explain to me a little bit about how it worked and why it worked. Now, Wendy, you've got as as good a voice as I've ever heard. Um, and I wouldn't just say that to you because you're here, but I, I really believe that. Where did that click that you realized, hey, God's given me a gift and, and I'm passionate about it? Oh, gosh. Probably within the last three years, maybe. Oh. Even two years, honestly. I am a, believe it or not, I'm really backwards <laughs> and bashful. It makes me nervous wreck still. I mean, I just, I, it, it terrifies me. People terrify me. Being in front of people scares me to death. Um, but about two years ago, when we shifted into this more worship-oriented atmosphere, um, something just kind of changed. And I thought, oh, okay. So I'm doing what I should have been doing a long time ago. And it's not the nerves anymore. I don't, I'm not even in that headspace. I'm not there because for me, it's all about the worship. And um, I think it's it's a great thing, but definitely with the last <laughs> the last two years. Otherwise, it's like pulling teeth with me because I'm like, nope. I don't want to sing. I'm happy to just stand back here and smile. Yeah. But when you first when you first start singing, the ideal thing is to mimic your favorite singers, and I think that's how she started. Because when we first started, <laughs> we were just helping out my sister and her band, so Whitney was kind of thrown into it. Mm -hmm. So her role was to mimic whatever singer she heard on the song. So, I, the Literally. last two yeah, yeah the last two years she's really just to me matured and and been comfortable in her own voice the last the last year especially yeah. it's been opinion. a process a, oh, yeah. it's a just a very long process yeah. <laughs> well one that's it's got you guys at a good place I, I know that um jesus said john four twenty four that god's a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth um heavy emphasis on that last part when he mentions that we have to worship him in truth, that what we do is just not scattered. Right. Um, why do you think it's so important that people understand theology has to be correct when you worship? I think it's the order of things in a way. To, yeah. um, aside from the, the, the fact that the whole purpose of worship is to be in the presence. And, you, you know, we... We study the Bible, Bible. We read the Bible in service. We pray. Um, you got to know what you're talking about. Right. And the purpose of worship, I think, musically, the purpose is to bring everybody in one mind and to be open and in that place and ready to just hear the Word of God. And I think that um, you, you know the difference when... When there's sound versus yeah. not. And I think it's just real important for us as worship leaders to be studied and to know what we're singing. And I think it's important that you believe you believe the songs you're singing. To me, it's important because we sing them over other people. Um, I need to know that what those songs are are rooted in right. the Bible. Because, you know, we don't take it lightly. Um, so I think it's really important that you that you're studied because mm -hmm. it's you know there are some questionable things out there right. and um, it's just it's because of what it is because yeah. it's such a big undertaking and it's all about him so it's just like I said I think it's real important that you that you know and that you're very learned yeah and yeah. understanding. For me, it's important to understand myself in the place of all these Bible stories, so to speak. Understand who God is to me personally. Mm -hmm. That's important for me to worship. I have to prepare and, and worship myself, basically, because of what he's done for me and what he is to me. Right. So that that's, to me, that's that's been a changing factor in my life as far as a worship leader goes mm -hmm. is just realizing that this is a personal thing you know and, yeah. and knowing God the way that I know him yeah. right the theology is important because you got to know why 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to have that base, I exactly. think. And, yeah. Because you can't have that heart response if you right. you don't know why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Nothing worse than just aimlessly pursuing God. Yep. Right. You know, you, you got to have yep. that foundation of why. But now, switching here just a little bit, um, and this is not certainly a brag for you guys, but just throwing this out there. I think people, especially when you're gifted by God, and I believe everybody that's been saved has been gifted somehow. Um, where do you think your your real strength in ministry is? I wouldn't have said this up until probably the last two years, but I think my strength in ministry is is in preparation, and that way when it comes time to deliver, I can put all of the uh, the secular aspects of it, if that's how you would say it, the the, am I going to play it right? Am I going to sing it in mm-hmm. on pitch? Are people going to respond? I, I can put all of that behind me and just deliver the word that God has given me through song. And before, I was not able to do that. I focused so much on trying to be perfect, and that's never going to happen. But we prepare. We spend a lot of hours preparing so that when we are ready to lead worship, I feel like we can truly lead worship with one mind of, of worshiping instead of all the technicalities getting in the way. And I feel like that's a strength of ours because we've we really sought after that. We we pursued that that strength and, and I feel like that would be our our strengths. Is being I'm able to that. freely yeah. deliver the word that the set list that we've prayed over and that we feel like God has given us. I feel like we can deliver it freely for the most part without without hindrance there are times I still get caught up <laughs> I'll be the first to say there yeah. are times that, that I let it get the best of me but for the most part it's uh, it's just like okay we've prepared we've put in the work it's time to just let go and, and let it come through the way God wants it to come through yeah, yeah. now he's he's using a lot of we there on the, the gift so I'm going to let you grab this one Whitney um, where's the we on man we could really grow in this area a little bit better um, <laughs> or where do you find yourself seeking, Lord, I'd, I'd really like to be better in this area? For me personally, it's confidence, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, I I doubt myself a lot, and in that, I hinder the Spirit a lot. Right. Um, so I think, honestly, I mean, really for both of us, I think to an extent, it's confidence in who God says we are and what we're doing. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you second guess yourself a lot. Oh, yeah. And I think really, as far as a downfall, that would be, that would be our biggest issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Collectively too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I'm sure you're not alone in that. I've felt that myself a yeah. lot. And you kind of keep going back to that, you know, God has not given us that spirit of fear. Right. right. You know, he wouldn't ask us into this if he wasn't yeah. going to see us through. Absolutely. So you're right though. There's, there's That's a lot of confidence that issues. That hard one to grasp. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's like, said, a lot of it has to do with that. I've put so much pressure on me though. Yeah. That I forget this isn't, you know, a performance, right. so to speak. Right. But this is what we get to do. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we've all been there. I, I know we have, you've been in church forever. Um, you get up there and, you know, for lack of a better term, it's just dead. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just uh, pulling teeth at this point. Um, maybe even advice really on this question, but how do you all personally try to involve a group of people or a congregation? Because obviously worship is not a, a spectator sport. Right. God wants everybody involved, whether you're on the platform or not. But how do you guys go about trying to incorporate people to, to really engage and get them to understand this is not us performing for you? We try to keep up with a lot of the places we play and, and do a lot of the same songs and even sometimes pick keys that we would think would be comfortable for a, a corporate crowd to mm-hmm. sing to and <laughs> and we just try to, to be sensitive to what other people might like we may love a certain worship band that is not popular on the radio so we try to sing songs that other people have have sung there so that they can get involved so that they're more comfortable we try to make sure that it's kind of a dimly lit place because for some reason that really does help when you feel Mm -hmm. like there's not all kinds of lights on you sometimes people let go just a lot of little things and then there are times that it just nothing you do works so that's just when you have to close your eyes and just 
have a personal worship experience and and just let the spirit take over. But we try to pay attention to the small details that that just might make people comfortable. We we don't talk a lot. I don't feel like that that God has called me to to talk in between every song or pray after every song. So that's not something we do. Mm-hmm. But we try to be sensitive to what the the maybe the area of the church and the the traditions of the church. It's it's not like we're trying to kick out traditional worship. Right. We've even incorporated that. And there are times we'll sing a song and there are a couple songs and it feels like people aren't getting comfortable. So we'll throw in the chorus to a hymn that everybody knows, just trying to find something that everybody can relate to. And sometimes that's that's almost impossible, but it, it can be done. As long as you're... I feel like people see through your intentions to your heart. I feel like yeah. they see through what you intend to do and they feel your heart is really trying to lead them in a time of worship. And a lot of people respond to that when when you just open your heart and let it come out that's usually the most successful right. thing but like i said sometimes it just doesn't work and that's okay <laughs> yeah I, I i agree with that i've found that if we just worship i mean like if if we can do it then the atmosphere changes on its own mm-hmm. the holy spirit does yeah, that that's the holy spirit controls all that and yeah. it changes and i feel like like it, it comes through um, in the last two years, again, they've been a big two years for us. We've had right. we've had not so much a lot of change, but a lot of personal growth and change. Mm-hmm. And God just saying, "Okay, now I need you to listen." Yeah. Um, but I used to think I used to get really frustrated in those situations when people do just kind of sit and look at you because I think, "Okay, well, I'm I'm failing at what I'm supposed to do," because right. you think it's your job to lead people, but. I read something somewhere that said it's not our job as leaders to lead them. It's our job to worship and live that lifestyle and and let it just come out. Mm -hmm. And then the Spirit will do the rest and they'll they'll learn to follow. So um, that's helped a lot, a whole lot. (laughs) We've we've learned a lot of lessons. Mm -hmm. Now you guys, you know, you're just talking about learning a lot of lessons. I've been people need to understand you you all have been doing this for a while and and been to a lot of different venues and a lot of different settings and had the privilege to play and sing and worship in some some pretty large places and some neat opportunities that God's put in front of you um and like anything when it comes to serving the Lord we're inclined to that you know garden moment of pride Mm -hmm. I mean we can all fall into it I don't care what it is um how do you avoid that temptation to fall into that trap to perform and make sure it's still all about Jesus. <laughs> I, honestly, I I look at my natural ability. Um, I have natural talent to where I can sing, but I'm not a great singer in my eyes. And mm-hmm. I can play, but I'm not a great player. So every time I start to get prideful, I usually find, <laughs> go to YouTube or something and, and just see... <laughs> people that can do what I wish I could do and that keeps me grounded in thinking hey this is where I don't feel like I'm skilled enough to be doing what I do that's just being honest and transparent I don't feel like that I'm skilled enough that's where I have to rely solely on what I feel like God has called me to do and there's just no room for pride in that Mm -hmm. when it comes time to think hey how are you getting to do what you get to do and it's just a God thing because I just I feel like there are so many more musicians and so many more singers out there that are just so much better than we are but yet God's still choosing to use us so for me I, I still do I still get prideful I still get in a you know I'm, I'm a male I get in a group of singers and players and I, I still get I start to dance on the edge but I'm thinking <laughs> they're better than me you know so you need to keep in check here because I have to rely on God through mm-hmm. me or I just feel uh, insignificant and insufficient so for yeah. me, that, that keeps me in check is realizing my abilities and trying to play on my strengths and what God has called me to do and, yeah. and do what what I can do. So that, that keeps me in check is when I start comparing my, my pride to my actual ability. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're way off here. <laughs> so I, yeah. I tend to stay grounded quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. I pray a lot. 
<laughs> a lot. I mean, I it's. I mean, I pray a lot for God to help me keep my head below my heart, so that my heart can okay. always, yeah. so that it's always first. But we're both terrible performers. Like if you, <laughs> yeah, if you've long. seen us ever have to entertain a crowd, mm-hmm. we're yeah. both so awkward yeah, and we're awkward. really bad at it. Yeah. I mean, like really bad at yeah. it. So that being said, we really kind of don't know how to do that. <laughs> So, so we that works to before. an advantage. Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's an advantage that we do have because really, we're bad at it. Like yeah. really, really, awkwardly bad at it. So we just, you know. I think that's so a good point out. you made. Like you're, you're not good at it, and that might be a gift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because you don't have to focus on something or right. try to be something you're not. Yeah. You know, obviously nobody wants to see fake. Right. You know, we all right. despise that ministry and, and really any walk of life for right. that matter. But I feel um, like we would never sell out the smallest auditorium in this area based on a performance we could put on. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the truth. I know that. I know that we could never sell tickets to a performance that Whitney and I did. Mm-hmm. It would it, it's the worship is is what we're called to do and right. that's where our strength is, so it's easy to stay in that. Especially when yeah. you've tried as much as we have in the past to get outside of that. Because we've struggled with callings. I mean it, ministry's tough, you know that, yeah. and and it gets lonely sometimes. So we've struggled with it, and as many times as we've tried to go outside of it, it it's now it's getting a lot easier just to stay in it and operate in oh, the yeah. strengths that, that mm-hmm. God has yeah. given us. Because we were miserable. I mean, we entertained for a few years, and and we weren't happy. Right. So I, you know, it is a it is a bit of an advantage because we've been there, and we know that's not us. Mm-hmm. So. It is, it is a bit of an advantage to be so bad at it. <laughs> now, I mean, obviously you guys are, are being way humble about the whole bad part because you mentioned this earlier a little bit, Israel, but the time and the resources and the energy that goes in to doing a, a what I would almost call like a respectable job for the Lord. I don't even know if I would ever say that I did a good job for right. him, but mm-hmm. I'm, we're just doing our, our due service. Yeah. Um. How much time and and resource and energy do you all really put in? Oh my! We we both work <laughs> a, about eight hours a day and probably come home and, and some some days we're we're up way into the night just putting in that much time and more. Mm-hmm. Most days uh, we sometimes we come in, home and crash on Mondays because Monday yeah. is just a day where like we have to have that space to. Really not respond a lot, not do a lot, but... And a house full of boys probably yeah. <laughs> keeps yeah. that interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Luckily, at, at work, they're they're lenient with me because my phone, it's like we're constantly sending messages trying to keep up. Yeah, We're constantly uh, choreographing schedules yeah. and how we're going to get this done and that done. And, and it's, it's hours and hours and hours a day for the most part. It uh, is. We, it we really put is. in... <laughs> We put in some time. Yeah. Ministry consumes. Yeah, that's where I our would hearts say a are. Good that's ninety-eight right. percent of our lives, and we 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 work really hard to be very careful with that too, mm-hmm. because we don't want our family to suffer. Right. Yeah. We don't want our relationships to suffer. So we it's it's a it's a delicate balance for sure. It is. But we I don't know of a time really that we don't work on no, something it's, we're, we're constantly it's, either talking about it do. or planning the next planning the next little worship event we're going to try to do or, or the one we're going to be involved in so it's it's pretty much a constant thing because like i said it it's where our hearts are we just mm-hmm. we have to work to provide so that's what we're doing <laughs> how, how do the we? and i'll deviate off how do the boys handle that um they're <laughs> they're they're better about it now. You know, when they were young, um, Israel's brother right. helped us raise yeah, those boys. Yeah. I mean, he he did a lot. And, and he's getting um, a good taste of it now, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Shout yes, out to Jacob, by the way, if you're listening. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> so we had a lot of help in the beginning stages, and but we also missed a lot. Mm-hmm. And so I think... There's a part of them maybe that's just kind of like, meh, you know, they don't. They do know a lot of worship music, though. They'll surprise you. They know. Yeah. They do. They know they all do. of our songs, and when we're in a pinch, we usually make Ben or Jude one run the lyrics because they know <laughs> they all the songs. Them. Yeah. They, they just yeah. don't. They've not. Ben plays drums. 
he is a good drummer, mm -hmm. but Jude's not really taken up with music yet, so they're very supportive. Yeah, um, well, they understand why we do. I think at what times they're just kind of like, oh, "Can we just do something else? Just yeah. anything yeah. else?" <laughs> right. Or because there are times they'll say, "Are you going to that church again?" <laughs> yeah. You know, so I think they, you know, they're children, right. and I think we've worked really hard for them to not see this as something that has taken us away from them. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think in any aspect, anytime you're spending a lot of, giving a lot of your energy to something that that there's a bit of i mean everybody suffers in some mm -hmm. some yeah, aspect it's inevitable, but, but yeah but they are really supportive they also and, see the the rewards of it they see yeah. how times it i mean they, they we're open we we're open with our kids and, and they they see the benefits of of service they they know that god has taken care of us or we would not be you know we would not be here today so there's little I think, I think they get to see the reality yeah. of it as well so so they may not understand it like we do, but I believe they understand. That's why Dad and Mom do what they do sometimes. Yeah, when we get the benefits from, not that that's why right, we do it, yeah. but they they see the perks. But with them especially too, to look back and see our kids with their hands in the air, and mm -hmm. then um, Ben has closed a worship night before in prayer. Right. I mean, just those little things, and and you think, okay, so they get it. Yeah. So that's that's. And staying, I guess, staying in that track, because that'll lead me, it goes in perfect what I was going to talk about next. Um, they they see the time that goes into having to be available, and I believe more importantly, and something I've learned over the years, dependability. Right, yeah. Um, I, I can't emphasize that enough, not just from my point of view, from, from ministering through through Word, but with you guys through uh, song and worship. Um, I think some people forget that... God has allowed us to do this. Right. And it's just not a job. We certainly, I mean, we know at the end of the day, we wouldn't do it for money. Right. I mean, we would all do it because we love doing it. But mm -hmm. also, people need to know that they can count on you. Right, yeah. Um, talk a little bit about being available, but more importantly, being dependable. You know? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, they don't invite you back for any reason. Right. You know? Right. The, uh, available part is sometimes a hassle for people around because <laughs> yeah. they don't understand why you're missing this event or missing that event but it's just like to me I, I am I'm truly honored I'm not just saying that or saying, oh I'm some great worship leader I am not but I am I consider it an honor for the opportunity so anytime somebody calls to me it takes precedence over yeah. pretty much anything I, I don't believe God's going to take me away from my kids and just oh you go on your own raise yourself I'm going to the road but but there are, are times that even they understand well we can't go to this birthday party because mom and dad are going here to worship uh, but that that's important is is the availability and dependability it's not just more than it's more than showing up it's it's knowing that you're going to show up and and be dependent upon to do your job in in, in the pulpit and to actually prepare the church for worship and you know I, I i don't believe like you said i don't believe they would call you back if you went one right. time and, and did a half give half effort and showed up late and right. just and I, I believe people look at that and it makes it convenient and they trust yeah. they put their trust in you because to me it's a sacred thing to, yeah. to be to be in charge of any type of of activity in a service and i believe they need to feel comfortable and believe that they can depend on you to do what they have called you to do and to do it with excellence as much as you can. Yeah. I mean, even in the secular world, if we right. show up unprepared and late right. to work, eventually right. you're going exactly. to get canned. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, so if, if, if non-godly people get right. that, I mean, imagine right. how God, who is holding everybody accountable, yeah. feels about that. Well, and it's... it's um, yeah. <laughs> Why would you want to do anything less? Right. So, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't, if you're willing to be available, then he's going to use you for sure. So. That was one of the big things when we first started realizing that maybe our calling was to lead worship instead of perform worship songs was a, a Brian and Katie Torwalt song that said, come and move, oh. we make room <laughs> for you. And mm -hmm. I thought that that's the key. 
And that's where availability comes in. You've got to make room. I mean, you can't fill your life with all these extracurricular activities and expect God to be to fill that too. I mean, mm-hmm. we we had to really sit down and, and weed out a lot of things to make room. And, and he's proven himself by keeping us busy. And I mean, it's... Like I said, it's where our hearts are, so that's where I'm the most satisfied. I could I could lead worship five or six times a week, I believe, and be okay with yeah. it. As long as I had time for my kids' ball games and stuff. You know. Now, where are you guys looking at the landscape today? Because, um, like I said, you, you go to a lot of different venues, and I'm sure a lot of different denominations and settings and stuff. Um, so you pick up on things. I mean, you've been around it long enough. Um, where do you all see what you would call legitimate concern today in, I guess, the area of worship, whether it be in churches or just on the overall, maybe things you're just saying, you know, I don't know about that. Like, I, I think we might want to draw back from that a little bit. I, I, I feel like this is just an opinion, and it's kind of specific to maybe this local Tri-Cities area, is we need to communicate between younger generations and older generations that we're not trying to do away with them yeah. that we're just trying to to I guess bring them put a modern touch on it but but sing songs that we relate to that we listen to in everyday life as well and and may, make sure there's a communication there that we're not trying to push anybody out that that I love tradition I grew up on it and they're you know I, I love it yeah, and I yeah. think I think that's where I see. That's what I see. Where in areas that that congregations may suffer is is making that point that we're we're not trying to do away with you. We're just trying to upgrade. I guess you know, just trying to trying to upgrade, trying to move on and 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 go with the flow. And it's not that we're trying to out uproot anybody, but. We're trying to bring in a new generation of leaders, which which has to happen. We have to progress. Mm-hmm. Trying to bring in a new generation of leaders and 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 all that, and that sometimes gets awkward. Is we're not here to push you out. We're just trying to trying to find something that we can all agree on. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I think we all have that same opinion a lot of times on on that. Um, I heard I was listening to a podcast, and I don't remember which one it was, but the the pastor was talking about how there always has to be change but it's not necessarily that you change the the tradition and you don't you're not changing who God is right. you're just changing to make yourself relevant so you can reach people outside of the church and i think that um i think that's a hard thing change is hard for everybody and i think really that's the biggest drawback almost mm-hmm. and the the most harmful thing is just that fear of change mm-hmm. yeah and, I think you, know. you guys you know hitting it on the head just again from my perspective too looking at it I, I think people fear change just because it's uncomfortable yeah. for everybody I get that you know we all fear change in some way shape or form but and like you said though you know what, what we're trying to do is reach people right right at the end of the day and we're all trying to do it the right way like mm-hmm. nobody wants to go about change poorly or right. reflect badly on God so and if we mess up you know hey it's going to happen right. you know I promise yeah. I have preached some really bad messages <laughs> before and I'm sure y'all could say that hey oh, we've yeah. sang some really bad yeah. tunes oh, before yeah. Yeah, yeah. it happens Plenty. but yeah. if the heart was there you know nobody like hopefully is purposely trying to go up there and sabotage the kingdom of God I mean yeah. I think we could see that pretty easily but um but yeah I, I just thought that was a interesting take on you know there are times we have to look at and you have to realize like you were saying we're not out to hurt anybody no yeah you know we're not here to reinvent the wheel either right. you know it's still all about christ at the end of the day um and so you know that's part of it but um practically speaking uh we'll flip a coin a couple of times here for you uh, what advice would you all have for pastors when it comes to and and church members when it comes to dealing with their worship leaders, if it's a tr- if it's a true worship leader that that is doing it from the heart, I would say just just be lenient. And if they're like me, they like feedback. Make okay. sure that there's an open line of communication of, of what you know. Pastors sometimes sit back and see things that 
that we may not see or hear things that we don't hear, I would just say make sure there's that open line of communication of, hey, you you sang this song a few weeks ago, so-and-so loved it. Let's try to do that more often, and, you know, sing songs that people like. Just make sure that there is an open line of communication instead of letting it all pile up and then <laughs> when it's when the relationship is busted and trying to throw it all out on the line just yeah. make sure there's, there's remains an open line of communication and you can be honest with each other because there are things that a pastor knows about his congregation that I only know music he may know some things pastorally that that I never think about because I'm not a pastor you know mm-hmm. and I, I more than m- most situations a worship leader is going to know more musically than a pastor so i mean they can they can definitely help each other out tremendously by communication and honesty yeah i think that's really the best the the best way to put it cuz i mean you got to work together mm-hmm. but you know pray for each other right yeah bingo. even even while it's going on yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean there are times because i'm telling you can feel those prayers yes you can yeah. i mean really. and and you know Absolutely. that i mean you yeah. when you have people praying you can feel it mm-hmm. yeah and so, yeah, pray for each other. Right. I mean, and, you know, bottom line, we're doing things the enemy hates. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, this is not like a slight dislike. I mean, this is the stuff that yeah. our enemy absolutely hates. And mm-hmm. so you're right about the whole prayer. I mean, and you can't do that enough. Them. And I think yeah. that goes a lot into what Israel was talking about, too, like relationships, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes, and you mentioned this, and you made a good point, leadership can get lonely. Yeah. And, and I think one thing people crave, and I don't care how long you've been saved, you, you want to be a part of the body. Exactly. You don't want to be that external member yeah. that nobody's really talking to or things. And and I think sometimes maybe that is something that we fail in, um, that we almost look at people that typically get on the platform like, well, oh, those guys are there and we're out here. Yeah. Right? And they'll just stay there and we're going to stay here. But at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're called to help one another. Absolutely. We're called to disciple one another. And you can't do that far apart. Right. I mean, it, you're going to have to go out to eat. You're going to yeah. have to college. You're yeah. going to have to text. You're going to have to go out and, and, hey, come over for dinner, all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think that's something to be said there. Now, on the flip side of that, um, what advice would you have for worship leaders dealing with pastors, though? Same thing. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I feel like it's the same thing. Two-way street. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and the main thing, the main thing is prepare, preparation. It, mm-hmm. You can cover a lot, a lot of inability with preparation. Like a lot of lack of talent can be covered with practice because it becomes muscle memory. Just prepare and make sure that you're not approaching it half heartedly. Uh, that's I, I just I don't feel like personally that you will ever get anywhere given a quarter or a half of yourself. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't feel like that that you will ever get anywhere. You're I feel like about you for have worship leaders for worship general. leaders, yes. Yeah. I feel like yeah. you need to be prepared. Right. And practice, and and you need to be you need to be confident, and the only way that happens is preparation. So yeah, communication and preparation. Yeah, I think for worship leaders too, as far as dealing with pastors, you got to remember that they're the, it's them, they're the boss. Right. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's God's church, yes, mm-hmm. but He's placed them at the head, and and you got to remember that. It's them, yeah. mm-hmm. and sometimes that's sometimes it's easy to forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. There's got to be that level of respect. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. But I, I would I would echo that with Israel as well, and I I think that goes for all ministry. Yeah. You know, God's, and I've learned this the hard way. Um, everybody's replaceable. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we don't like to think like that, but oh, at no. the end of the day, I mean, it's this is not our church. This is His. Right. Um, they can get anybody for the pulpit. Yeah. And God will, and He's been doing that forever. I mean, yeah. eventually Moses left and Joshua took over, and God moved right on. Mm-hmm. And I'm reminded of that daily. Um, you know, and like you said, if we're not prepared, if we're not putting the time in and exercising the gift God's called us to do, you know, we have to understand. Sometimes pastors roles to to correct at that right. point. You it know, is. Um, and that's like you were talking about the whole prayer line. I mean, that that's why we've got to be prayed up for one another because we are prone to wonder, like the song says. That's everybody. So, yep. um, all right. Now looking back, being nostalgic here, I guess, um, if you could go back and and talk to teenage Israel Crawford, who was getting interested in music, or or young Whitney, 
what would you say to them 10, 15 years ago now that you know some things? Learn to Because there's somebody listening right now. <laughs> Learn to know, really pray. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I really don't know because I don't know that I would want to say anything to change anything because the process has been such a beautiful thing. It really, um, I agree with that. So, I really don't know. I, really, I, 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 would, can't, I don't think I can answer I that. I would say just, just sell out earlier. You know, sell out. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and commit to it. Commit to your calling. Don't fight it for years and, yeah, and dance around yeah. it. I would, I would say just, just sell out to it. But I have to agree with Whitney. The, the, the process, that, I don't know, it's just been a... Most of you guys that know me, you and, and, and the guys I talk to still on a regular basis that have known me, I, I'm, I was hot-headed. I still am at times. I'm stubborn. <laughs> I have to learn things the hard way. I just I feel like God knows me. I keep telling Whitney, she says, you're going to have to watch how you talk to, to some of these people that you play music with. And I'm, I'm saying, God knows me. He knows who I am. He's put people in my path that can take me. But I feel like he's brought us... He's brought me personally through a lot of things that I have done that were just flat out stupid. But I've it's like I've never forgotten that. I've learned the hard way. So so now and I pursue things wholeheartedly and I feel like I've learned, hey, this is it. I've tried everything else. This is it and I, and I'm in pursuit of that. But but I would tell myself just commit to it. Sell out earlier. Sell out right off the bat. You're going to save yourself a lot of trouble. Yourself yeah. wouldn't listen. Right. I know right. it would. I mean, but I would thing, still I would still tell myself that. People Go like ahead and us. Sell out. I, and I know and I can say this cuz we live in the same house. People like us we've got to fight for it. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. that's the type of people we are. We've got the fight for this for this transformation has solidified it for us. And continues to do so. So, you know, I wouldn't have listened. He wouldn't have listened. Doesn't matter really what we would have yeah. said. I'd have been like, okay. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Being stubborn. So, yeah. 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 Luckily, God's still working on us. Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I thought uh, that was very beneficial. I got a lot out of that, and hopefully those that are listening did as well. Uh, we're going to pause right there and come right back with a few announcements. We're going to talk to these guys about their schedule coming up, and I think Israel has agreed to play a song for us, so stay on right with us, and we will come back in just a moment. God bless. Alright guys, welcome back. We're going to close out with a few announcements here. Like I said, Israel's going to play us out with a song here. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to let these guys talk about um, their schedule upcoming so you can check them out and uh, be with them in service if you're in your area. So Whitney, why don't you let us know a little bit about where you guys might be at coming up. Um, let's see. We are actually taking a bit of a break the first couple weekends of the month. And then on the 23rd, we're going to be leading the 11 o'clock service at Gate City First Baptist Church. And then that night we have a youth revival at Ridgeview Baptist, mm-hmm. and it's down. Oh, what's that Mount called? Mount Carmel area. Yeah, right? West Carter's Churchill. Valley. Is that West right. Carter's Valley? And this is in September, correct? Yes, this yeah. is September the twenty third, and then we're leading at the eleven o'clock service again for the Gate City First Baptist on the thirtieth. Okay. Um, now, our friends Tyler and Tara Matherly of the Nutty Java. Mm-hmm. They are closing for some renovations and such um, the first bit of September, and they're rebranding. So they're going to reopen on the 28th um, under the new name Neutral Grounds, and we're going to lead a worship night there on the 28th, I think probably around 6.30, 7 o'clock. And that's located where? That is downtown on Broad Street, right on the corner. Kingsford. Yeah, of Broad and... I don't know what the other one's Rodden name Street, is. It's I right there. So. It's Rodden right Street. there. It's Rodden just Broad Street. Street. It's right yeah. there. Yeah. So, and there are some great people. So awesome. we're really excited about that. Well, that's that. exciting. And I think there's an acoustic something coming up sometime in September. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just not sure the date. Oh, that's fine. Um, again, you can check these guys out. Again, reach out to them if you want to. Uh, if you know them and they'll be up in the area. If you don't. Uh, and have it. Excuse me. Had a chance to listen and be with them in worship. You're missing out. Uh, so. Uh, to give you a little taste of it, uh, we'll let Israel here close us out with a song. Uh, is this one of your originals? Yeah. Okay, so, and this uh, song is called what now? 
Uh, the cross has set me free. Awesome. I sang right. for the first time a couple weeks ago at Crossway Baptist Church. Yeah. Up every hill, through every valley, when all is calm and in raging seas, in all my strengths and in my weakness, the cross has set. Fields of green and in the desert, in darkest night, and when darkness flees, it breaks down walls and camps around me. The cross has set me free. Symbol of love, bridge to redemption, fountain. The Savior hung and paid my ransom. The cross has set me free. Excellent. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, thank you again. We appreciate you tuning in. God bless you all.